Welcome to Biology My Passion. I am Saumya Harikrishna. Now we are learning the chapter Human Health and Diseases. In the previous videos, we discussed mainly about health, what are the factors influencing health and certain infectious diseases. And later, we discussed the life cycle of the malarial parasite Plasmodium in detail. Today we are going to learn the most important part of this chapter, that is immunity. So what is meant by immunity? The overall ability of host organism to defend against the microbial infection by their immune system is called immunity. So immunity in our body can be of two types. First is innate immunity and other type is acquired immunity. So innate immunity is a non-specific type of immunity. Means it is not very specific to a particular bacteria or a virus or any disease causing microbe but rather it is preventing every organism from entering the body by creating a barrier. For example, if you have a house and there is no fencing or wall outside, anybody can come inside and knock at the door. Or even the stray animals can come in, a dog can come in, a cat can come in. There is no specificity there, right? But if you are making a wall around it, and you are having a gate with a latch on it and you are locking it, nobody can enter. So it is preventing everybody, whether it is an animal or your relative, somebody from within your family staying in the same home or a stranger, whoever comes, it is not allowing them to enter. So it is a barrier preventing everyone from coming. in. So this is how our immunity, innate immunity is also functioning and this is obtained to us free of course by birth. This is our uh, inherent quality or by birth we are all born with this. Whether it is you or me, we all have in innate immunity. So uh, what are the types of innate immunity? Actually there are four types of barriers our body is having against the infectious agents. First is physical barrier or anatomical barrier. Second, physiological barrier. Third, cellular barrier and four cytokine barrier okay so let us see one by one physical barrier so what is meant by physical barrier physical barrier means there are two types either our skin just like a fencing i told our skin anything or any microbe wants to come inside it has to enter through the skin so as long as skin is intact it will not allow any microbe to enter so that is a barrier so skin is the first type of physical barrier for us. But how can skin prevent all the entry? First of all, it is a continuous layer. And we know it is a multi-layered structure with the outermost layer is almost dead. So no microorganism like bacteria can live on that dead cell. And another thing, the pH of skin is also around 3 to 5, which will not allow microbes to enter. Now second is the mucus coating. We know the openings of our body, especially the gastrointestinal tract or the respiratory tract or the urinogenital tract, everywhere we have mucus lining. The mucus lining has got mucus, mucosa cells and also some cilia. So these mucosa cells will uh, kill the microbes at the same time cilia will check the entry of the microbes. So this is called a physical barrier. Now coming to physiological barrier. Physiological barrier means certain responses or the secretions from our body can prevent growth of microbes including bacteria. For example, we know our saliva has an enzyme lysozyme or the tear or the earwax. All these secretions from our body can prevent the bacterial growth. They are antibacterial in property. The same way we have hydrochloric acid in our stomach that can also kill the germs. Sometimes our body temperature increases as a result of inflammation or infection. So that is actually a way of killing the microbe by rising the temperature. And pH of the body is varying at different places. We know the pH in the mouth is different from that of the stomach and that is different from that of the intestine and the pH of the blood is different. So this different pH also helps in maintaining a very good healthy system for the body. Now coming to cellular barriers, there are certain cells also which are acting like our army. So whenever we learn about immune system, the best way to learn about them is thinking them as the soldiers. We know that the proud soldiers of our country, we are all proud of them and uh, they protect our country from the invaders. Okay, but they are, are all of them are not trained in the same way. They are doing in different ways. Some are army, some are air force people and some navy. So 
their mode of actions are different but their function is to protect our country so the same way our body is like our country where the soldiers are fighting in by different means to make it healthy or keep it healthy or uh, free from invaders so especially when we talk about these uh, invaders there are certain cells which can eat them away so those cells are called the phagocytic cells do you remember feeding in amoeba amoeba engulfs the food particle right so here also these cells are engulfing the uh, microbe so killing them okay do all cells have this property no some of them so before i go further i just would like to give you an idea about the white blood corpuscles that we learn in class 11 because these white blood cells are playing a crucial role in providing us with immunity do you remember which are the types of wbc granulocytes and agranulocytes granulocytes three types we learn eosinophils basophils and neutrophils and agranulocytes monocytes and lymphocytes of these neutrophil of this granulocyte and monocyte of the agranulocyte both of them are phagocytic in nature whereas the last type that is the lymphocyte cells they are very crucial in providing immunity they are of two types b lymphocytes and t lymphocytes whenever there is an infection this b lymphocyte will produce a protein called antibody which in turn will fight off the disease whereas the t lymphocyte will help the b to make that antibody so without t's help b cannot make anyways we will learn about them in detail in coming part but now let i just told you to understand this so which are the phagocytic cells here monocytes and neutrophils okay now there are yet another type of cells called macrophages they are also phagocytic i will tell about them monocytes are otherwise called a pmnl polymorphonuclear leukocytes they can phagocyte along with the monocytes so these are in the blood whereas in the tissues these macrophages are doing this function so since wbc is uh, connected with our immune response whenever we have some infection our wbc count increases that is why doctors ask us to go for a blood check when we have infection. So if they find that the WBC count is more, that means we have severe infection in our body. Their number multiplies. And also these uh, monocyte cells, they will form enlarged irregular shaped cells called macrophages. Because if monocytes are not able to phagocyte the large pathogen, so that will accumulate and form a larger cell called a macrophage. And these macrophages are irregularly shaped large cells. They will be distributed at different parts of the body for eating away the microbes or the worn out parts or any virus coming inside. Everything will be eaten away by our macrophages also. But there are certain lymphocytes called the natural killer cells. They are also killing pathogens but they are not killing by phagocyting but their mode of action is different. So especially they protect our virus infected cells from further viral infection. So what do they do? They secrete a chemical called a perforin. So this perforin will make pores on the plasma membrane which will allow the water to come in. Once water comes in, what happens? The cell swells up and ultimately burst up. So during that time, all the diseased cells are destroyed. So that is about the cellular barrier. Now we are moving on to cytokine barrier. Cytokine barriers are brought about by certain signaling proteins called the interferons. Interferons are secreted by the viral infected cell, but they will protect the neighboring cells from further viral infection. How? They are actually proteins. As I mentioned, they are proteins, means sequence of amino acids. So there are large number of amino acids, around 270 amino acids joined together to form this interferons. So the interferons will secrete translation inhibiting protein which will protect the rest of the cells or the neighboring cells from further viral infection. But these interferons are highly specific in their nature because if one it is, it is produced against a particular organism or a virus means it will not be effective against another virus. So each time they have to be secreted from the virus infected cells. It's not only used in viral infection uh, treatment, but it is uh, like an antiviral therapy. But uh, sometimes it is used in uh, cancer patients also because their immune system is very weak. So interferons are also administered to them. So to prevent uh, the further tu tumors also can be destroyed at the same time, viral infections can be prevented. Now another is the local body response to uh, certain injuries 
it may be due to any agent but if there is an injury in the body body shows certain responses through the immune system they are called as inflammations the inflammation can be in a different forms sometimes a color change a redness may appear or sometimes it is pain swelling or sometimes fever rise in temperature to kill the micro now when we come to acquired immunity acquired immunity is actually pathogen specific uh, this is actually nothing but the memory of our immune system for example it is well explained it with the help of chicken pox many of us have got chicken pox right first time when we get chicken pox the virus is coming to our body it's a new intruder for us we don't know about the chicken pox virus but our body or immune system will find out that oh why chicken pox virus has come i have to make some antibodies against them so what do they do the body creates antibody against chicken pox virus these antibodies are also very specific in nature they are produced by whom i told b lymphocytes okay with the help of t lymphocytes so these antibodies are nothing but proteins so they will fight the disease so it will take our body to recognize the microbe and then make the antibody against that so that we get infected but within a short period of time we recover because our antibodies are working so once the microbes are gone away what happens to our army antibodies can they go out of our blood no they will remain in our blood for the rest of the life and they are very specific to chicken pox virus so next time your friend is infected with chicken pox you can go there without any fear you go there and sit with the friend take care of him so in that case what is happening your body is again receiving certain chicken pox virus but this time when the virus comes inside itself already we have the antibodies against this chicken pox virus the memory will work oh i have seen you somewhere come i will destroy you right so the first time when we we were not prepared it took some time for us to prepare the antibody that is a kind of mild response called a primary response that is a initial infection after that second encounter with the same microbe is going to be a very vigorous or the anamnestic response we say that is secondary response which is anamnestic it destructive it will destroy everything and we are not going to fall by that disease okay that's why we don't get it again so that is nothing but the memory of our immune system so specificity is the one particular peculiarity of this kind of response at the same time diversity they are produced against wide range of microorganisms also the body has got discriminating power that is the body can discriminate our cell cells from non self cells so the main cells involved in providing immunity for our body are b lymphocytes and t lymphocytes right so now this uh, acquired immunity can be of two types active immunity and a passive immunity as the name indicates active means what actively doing that means our immune system is producing an antibody against a pathogen for example as i mentioned the case of chicken pox earlier suppose you are getting chicken pox virus in your body who is making antibody against that to fight off your own body right so since we are making our antibodies we are active that is called a active immunity at the same time there are situations where antibodies are administered into our body then that is called a passive because we are not making it is given to us understood that's a difference active means our body is producing the antibodies whereas passive means antibodies are given to us or we can use the term preformed already prepared preformed antibodies are given to us it can be natural or artificial so how can it be both the ways let us see natural typical example is a chicken pox infection when our body encounters the first time the micro our body prepares antibodies and they remain in our blood that's called a memory secondary infection is an amnestic response okay so that is active immunity because our body made it but it is little slow process because first time we fell sick only then we could produce it so it was little slow and it's a full effect came little later only right and at the same time uh, there is some uh, and this effect uh, once it is prepared it can remain in our body for a long period of time so the immune response is for a long period of time and it has memory associated with it but only the uh, people who are having strong immunity can do it right suppose they are immunodeficient if they are uh, having some disease where their immune system is not functioning they will not be able to do it whereas the second case is given to us or getting naturally nobody would like to give anything for free uh, if we want something we have to get it 
no pain, no gain, we know. There is a person in this world who is always ready to give us anything unconditionally, without even taking for uh, self, uh, that person is ready to give you. Who is that? Your mother, right? So, the, in this case also, immune system also, the, she has given you some antibodies already when you were born. Because once you are coming to this world, you are not having proper immune system. So you need immediate protection. So she has given you through her placenta some of the antibodies. At the same time, colostrum, that is the initial milk from the mother, which is yellow color fluid, that milk also contains many antibodies needed for the immune system of the baby. So that's why we say the breastfeeding is very necessary for the child uh, because the child becomes healthy if they are breastfed right so that's the reason okay so that is called a passive because we are not doing anything we are just receiving the uh, antibodies but this uh, the principle of this memory of our immune system is made use of in vaccination or immunization okay so immunization is another word for vaccination so there also uh, when the microbe is coming to our body, it does not know whether the microbe is living microbe or it is a dead microbe or inactive microbe. Nothing our body knows. The moment the microbe comes, it will make the antibody. So, in the principle of vaccination or immunization, we are using this memory technique. That is, we administer the killed pathogen or inactive pathogen into the body in a very small amount. So for our immune system, okay, microbe has come. Suppose we are taking oral polio vaccine or uh, vaccine against polio or tuberculosis. For the body, oh, polio virus has come. Immediately body will produce antibody against a polio virus and kill. But since it is inactive, we don't fall sick. But at the same time, we prepared antibody. Then BCG injection is, vaccination is given. BCG is for tuberculosis immediately our body will feel oh tb bacteria has come in i have to do something they make the antibody then they destroy it but it's already dead now nothing happens but that antibody will remain in uh, our body for the rest of the life so like the child is given and in this vaccination at a smaller age before it actually comes out to the society or gets exposed to all the kind of microbes around because when they are very small we know we protect them it may be mostly uh, it is the child is in the um, protection of mother uh, father and very close relatives it's not coming to the whole world but once you start going to school and all you mingle with people come to society and you are getting exposed to many types of microbes but before that age itself your body is prepared or create we have created all the antibodies against all the deadly diseases right so that is called a, uh, the immunization but here also when an OPV is given or a BCG vaccine is given think who is making the antibody through vaccination are we giving the antibody no there also killed the pathogen is given we are making antibody so is it active or passive active right active immunization or it's a part of active immunity so that is artificial active immunity whereas there are certain cases where in that situation we cannot wait for our body to prepare because it's a very critical dangerous situation so two situations like that are first is tetanus it's a bacterial infection when we are getting hurt by road accident or by any uh, rusted articles or metals anything we go and take a TT injection because there also within a short span of time the bacteria can multiply and it can become deadly so we cannot wait for our body to create an antibody and fight against that because our life is at risk so during that time also they are giving already prepared tetanus antibody not the vaccine okay here we are giving antibody preformed antibody we will inject into the patient so that directly antibody is getting so that the body is getting rid of the bacteria here are we making the antibody no it is given to us so is it active or passive passive understood that is called a passive immunization okay vaccination is active okay uh, so this is the difference between active immunity and passive immunity. The basic fundamental difference if we are making antibody active. If we are not making it is given to us passive whether it is artificial or natural. Hope you understood the basic ideas about immunity. We will continue this in the coming videos. So please like share and subscribe to my channel biology my passion.